All right, well, I might as well fess up now. It's the holiday season. We are responsible, America, for those higher insurance premiums you're paying and the fact that the health care laws uh, lifted the price of almost anything medically related. It's the only thing I can figure out, and the president was onto it, saying in an interview in The Atlantic, and I quote here, the folks who are now Trump supporters, they're responding to a fictional character named Barack Obama who they see on Fox News or who they hear about through Rush Limbaugh. Now a man who's going to obviously confess and, and get the word out as well, Carl Rove, the former deputy chief of staff to President George W. Bush. I just want to cleanse my soul, uh, Carl, and let people know that I did indeed hike insurance premiums, that I did indeed give them that sticker shock with high deductibles that sometimes run in excess of $5,000. Good. I cleared my conscience. What say you? Well, Neil, I'm sorry, but it's not about you. Uh, we're, we're, Fox News is collateral damage. Uh, yeah, he blames uh, Fox News for uh, creating this uh, climate of opposition to him. But the real target that he has in mind is the American people. Uh, this interview is well worth reading because it is so jaw-droppingly uh, condescending and arrogant. He says uh, Fox and Rush Limbaugh had a l an impact in terms of how large a portion of the white voters would see me. Uh, it shaped an entire generation of voters and tapped into their deepest anxieties. He says that it activated, we helped activated their fears. Uh, he says that uh, as a result, uh, yeah, white people voted for him, and, and, and that's okay, but they, they, they are people who have now been made afraid and suspicious and fearful because what they're seeing and hearing. Uh, in, in other words, white people are racist if they disagree with me. Uh, you can, you've had your fears and your anxieties activated by Fox, not by the facts of the matter, but by your racism, by your bigotry. You can't disagree with me about the Affordable Care Act. You can't be upset about your premiums going up, your insurance going away, not being able to keep your plan, unless you're a bigot. You can't be concerned about the weakest economic recovery since uh, the country began and the only economic recovery in which median household income dropped, unless you're a bigot. You can't disagree with my policy of doubling the national debt in eight years unless you're a bigot. I mean, this, is, this interview is, is, sure, it kicks around Fox and Rush Limbaugh a little bit, but it's the heart of it is an assault, a condescending and arrogant assault upon the good sense of the American people. The only reason you can disagree with me is, is your fears have been activated about this black man named Barack Obama by these institutions that have misled you. I'm real. I'm great. I've done everything good. And if you disagree with me, well, it's because you're driven by your anxiety and your fears about a black man being But you know, it's the permeated States. the entire Democratic Party still oh, trying sure. to come up with reasons to, to see how Hillary Clinton lost by constantly pointing out the popular vote uh, against by constantly saying, uh, you know, it was the Russians, it was uh, hacking, it was Jim Comey, uh, lunar Jim Comey. eclipses. I, you yeah. know, eventually there has to come a moment where you, you look at a marionette and say, is there something we did? Because all well, I remember, Carlos, prior to the election, the president kept pounding point. This was about his legacy. This was about his issues. This was about a lot of the stuff he had done. And then after the fact, no, it wasn't about my legacy. It wasn't about my issues. It wasn't about any of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, look, we have two issues here. We have the Democratic Party, which you're right. The sooner they wake up and start to smell the coffee and realize they lost the election because they had a lousy message, they're too far left wing, they had a lousy candidate, and they got trumped, uh, then the better off they're going to be. But you know what? I'm beginning to think it's going to be a long while before they wake up out of their hysteria and start to face reality. Then we have President Obama. And President Obama is doing what he has done for a long period of time, which is to construct a reality of who you are that says that nobody who opposes him can do so on the basis of a, of a reasonable disagreement about the policy or direction of the country. Uh, you, you, he, he, it's amazing. The straw, are, the straw men that keep popping up in here. He says, here's how he describes, you mentioned the Affordable Care Act and about premiums going up and so forth. No, no, that's not why people oppose the Affordable Care Act. The, the, the whole debate about Obamacare, here, where the whole way in which it was got framed was he's trying to take something from you to give free stuff. I mean, now, I don't remember people saying that it was to give free stuff to people. I think it was people were concerned about being in control of their own family's health point. and good about their point. premiums going up, their policies going away, their doctor being unavailable. But no, that the president says, no, it's about something else completely unrelated to people's real concerns. Well put, Carl. Thank you very much. And as I've been saying here, Carl, it's not about the color of the president's skin, maybe more the thickness of it. Carl Rove, former White House Deputy Chief of Staff, multiple best-selling author. Good seeing you. Merry Christmas.
action-packed segment tonight, President Obama has just 28 days left in office, and he's taking some final shots at Fox News, among others. In a new interview with The Atlantic, President Obama says, quote, if people are angry that somehow the government is failing, then they are going to look to the guy who represents the government. And that applies, by the way, even to some of the folks who are now Trump supporters. They're responding to a fictional character named Barack Obama, who they see on Fox News or who they hear about through Rush Limbaugh, end quote. Compare that to how President George W. Bush responded to his media critics during an interview with Bill O'Reilly in 2010. I spent a lot of time with the media. I harbor no resentment to the media, by the way. Really? Even yeah. the people who tried to hurt you and called you yeah. a criminal? No, I, I, yeah, don't I, I don't like to be called a criminal. But I think a lot of times the media were just transmitting other voices. Joining us now to analyze Dana Perino, my co-host on The Five and author of a really fabulous new book, <laughs> Let Me Tell You About Jasper, which makes a great Christmas gift. I can attest to that. Ah, thank you. You're thank very you. welcome. Let me ask you, I think you were there for that interview with Bill O'Reilly. Yeah, so that was in 2010, so it was a couple of years after the president left office, and right, it was during his book tour for Decision Points, and I remember going there, and the president hadn't done interviews in the intervening time. Um, he had stayed out of the spotlight, as he said he would, and he never wavered on that tone, right? Just to say, I'm not going to worry about negative press that much. Like, he didn't love it, but he had a pretty strong stomach for it. Um, we didn't complain about MSNBC incessantly at the White House. I think that felt a little bit unnecessary. And also, the thing that's amazing now, and especially for President Obama, is the tools that they have at their disposal to talk directly to Amer the American people um, are just incredible. So he can reach so many more people than would ever watch Fox News with a direct message. Now let me say that President Obama said there's a concentrated vilification of him, not only here at Fox News, but by Rush Limbaugh, and he talked about a conservative echo chamber, Dana. Is that fair? Well, that's certainly how they see it. And I think that they wish that there was a corresponding left-leaning echo chamber. And there just really has not been. However, that said, liberals and left-leaning sort of media, all of Hollywood, pop culture, music, entertainment, well, movies, Dana, what television, about, what about, books, well, I was going to say, what about NBC, 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 CBS? You don't think that the left well, has their own province? I have a little bit of a different perspective. So as the White House press secretary, when I was in the briefing room, I do believe that the reporters who were in that room tried very hard to be fair. Mm -hmm. But you cannot control uh, editorials or opinions, and now you have ability for people to opine in all sorts of different ways. Right? It used to be hard to get an op-ed placed in a newspaper. Now you just put it up on Medium, and maybe you'll get lucky, and somebody will tweet about it. And there's just so many other ways to communicate than we had even in 2008. Now, what I saw when George W. Bush responded, his critics could be vicious. I remember how vicious they could be, especially after the weapons of mass destruction in Iraq and all the like. Mm -hmm. But it seems to me like he was like, you know what, I'm going to take the high road here. I'm going to be classy about this. Well, it wasn't just the media, okay? That actually, some of the worst things that he was called were, were done by Harry Reid, the Senate uh, majority leader at the time, uh, who called him, I think it was a liar and a loser um, in a time of war, right? So it, it wasn't just the media who might have given But in the a hard aftermath time. of Donald Trump's election mm -hmm. and the fact that Trump used alternatives to get around the media. Mm -hmm. Does President Obama's message have added import? Is it different than what President Bush said about his critics? I don't think that's, uh, well, I actually feel like what President Obama said in the Atlantic interview in 2016 is similar to things that he said leading up to the election in 2008. So he, he's had a, he's had Fox News as a villain from the beginning. And I think that they're, I feel like the Democrats are, they haven't reconciled the reason that President Obama personally is very popular in the polls. I mean, it's actually quite remarkable for a two-term president to be up where he is. But they still lost the presidential election, and they're trying to figure out how that can be. How do you reconcile those two things? Yeah, I think, I, think he's, I think he's hurt, and I think he feels, given the Republican victories, not only in the presidential race, but holding I, on to the Senate and the gubernatorial races, I think he feels responsible, and he's yeah. looking for someone well, to pin the blame Well, if on. he felt responsible, then he wouldn't blame Fox News. <laughs> well, all right. But speaking of...
Yet, yesterday, Newt Gingrich came out and said uh, one of the terms that Donald Trump uh, really is known for is saying the term "drain the swamp." The crowd went wild when he when he in getting elected, and still says it today. He says that the word that Newt Gingrich got from inside the camp, which you would know, was that they don't want to use that term anymore. That he doesn't really, he's not going to say it. And if you look at uh, some of the left are saying they're looking at some of the people in his cabinet, and it doesn't reflect it. Where does drain the swamp stack up on things to adhere to? on the Trump camp? Look, I think if you had to uh, put them in a chronological order, drain the swamp, it's probably somewhere down the bottom as opposed to getting tax reform done, making sure middle class people have more jobs, the, you know, making sure we're renegotiating our bad trade deals, ensuring that we're fixing Obamacare, uh, repairing and replacing that or replacing that and, and putting in something new. I think at the end of the day, it's about the economy. It's about creating jobs. It's about mm -hmm. fixing the bad trade deals. So draining the swamp is a larger narrative, but what it's really about is putting people back to work. We cannot continue to have a 1% growth rate in this country and think we're going to be a, a global powerhouse anymore. We need to grow the economy. What Donald Trump is saying and what you saw yesterday was him meeting with the CEO of Boeing Corporation mm -hmm. saying we're not going to spend $4 billion on an airplane. And Boeing Corporation has come out and said, we agree with you. We can do it for less. He's not even the president yet, and he's already renegotiating our deals that were bad deals before he got into office. That's what the people elected him to do. That's what he's going to do. I don't think people knew he was going to take such meticulous personal uh, attention to particular deals. And in this case, you know, people sitting out there, whether it's the Boeing deal or the carrier deal, they go, yeah, hope he keeps doing that. Now, Corey, you're up in New Hampshire right now, where you're from, where your family is, to celebrate your, uh, your Christmas. But I understand in a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of days after Christmas, you are moving down to Washington and you're, you're opening up a new business, a consulting firm. In other, it, I, I was reading some of the mainstream media today. It's, they're making the case you're becoming part of the swamp. Well, I, you know, I love the mainstream media. They've been so good to me this election. <laughs> so they want to get it right for the first time. Yeah, right.